Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I was kind of messing around with a little motion graphics scene in Blender, trying to make it kind of satisfying. So I made this and it's super satisfying. I like it, I don't even know what to call it, but I really like it. So I'm gonna take you through the whole process of making this. You don't need any sort of plugins or add-ons. You just need a fresh scene in Blender 2.91, which is free. And then I'll take you through the whole process. Now, if you are on my Patreon, you will be getting access to this blend file here and a ton of other stuff that I put on there monthly. So if you want to check that out in the description, you can. And if you want something else like Discord, like where we have the Pixo community group where you can chat and stuff, it's also in the description below. You can join that. So um, I've talked enough now. Let's get into actually making this. So go ahead and open up a new scene in Blender. I've just gone ahead and deleted all of the default items in the scene. I'm using Blender 2.91. And to get started, I'm gonna go Shift A. I'm gonna get in my mesh options. I'm gonna add in a cylinder. And with the cylinder here selected, we're gonna tab into edit mode. And in edit mode, we have all of this geometry active. We're gonna go S, Z, and we're just gonna flatten it on the Z axis. So we're gonna flatten it down about this much. And then while we're still in edit mode here, we're gonna go while we're in our front orthographic view. So make sure to hit one to go into front orthographic view. And for all this geometry active, we're gonna go R, X, nine, zero, and we're gonna hit enter. So now it is flattened and we've rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. So let's go over to our face select mode, select this face here, X and delete faces. Select this guy here, hit X and delete faces. Now we're just gonna hit A to select all of the geometry to make it active. We're gonna go E to extrude and then we're gonna go right click to let go and then we're gonna go Alt S and we're just gonna scale this in. So Alt S like that, just a little bit. And that creates our kind of donut ring looking thing. We're gonna tab out of edit mode to go back into object mode. And in object mode, we're gonna go with this selected and I'm still in my front of graphic view. I'm gonna hit G to move it and then Z and that's gonna constrain it to the Z axis. And if you hold in control or command, it'll snap it um, in increments. So we're gonna snap it till it's sitting right on the floor here. And you can see this red axis line, it should be sitting right on top of that. So now we have this guy up here. We're gonna go to a modifiers tab and let's make it look a little bit nicer by adding in a bevel modifier. We don't want it applied to every um, edge. So we're gonna go to our limit method and make it angle. And we're gonna come here to the amount and just bring it down. So this is just creating a bit of a bevel and then bring the segment count up. And let's add on top of that a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out, go to object mode and enable shade smooth. So now we have this looking really nice. But to make things easier for us to see during our animation, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna, with this guy still selected, we're gonna go over to our materials tab and we're gonna give it two temporary materials. So let's click new. Let's just call this um, one. So that's our first material. And let's click on the little plus here click new and let's just call that um, two. So let's call that two, okay? So let's just click on the first material and just come down over here to where it says viewport display with that first material selected and just make it a color. So in this case, I'm just gonna make it yellow or something, doesn't really matter. I'll select the second color and I'm just gonna make that a color. In this case, I'll make it blue or something just so we can see the difference. I'm gonna make that one blue. Then I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna go into my front orthographic view and I'm gonna hit Z, I'm gonna go into wireframe mode and I'm just gonna click here on my screen and select half of this geometry. And with that second material selected, I'm gonna hit assign. So now we can see we have these two different shaders applied to this object here. And now when we rotate it, we'll be able to see that in the viewport much easier. So let's start with some basic um, stuff here. So let's bring up this frame, this um, bar over here, just to bring our timeline up a bit. The end frames here are way too much. We only need about 130 frames. So I'm just gonna type in 130 over here in the end frames. That now gives us 130 frames down here in our timeline. And what we're gonna do is with this guy active, we're gonna go to frame one. And on frame one, if you actually hit your properties panel, so you hit N, that's gonna bring up this properties panel. Go to the item tab here. And we're gonna go down over here to the rotation vectors and you're gonna hit I, hovering over this, hit I, make sure to do that on frame one. And then we're gonna come over to frame 130 and we need to come to this Y value here because this is the Y rotation axis we wanna mess with. So we're gonna come here on frame 130 and we're gonna come to the Y value. We're gonna type in three, six, zero and we're gonna hit enter. And then while we're still there, hit I, it goes yellow, so we've inserted a keyframe. So we can now see we have a keyframe for here and for here, and that's gonna allow it to rotate over this 
if we come to frame one and play the animation, we can see between here and there, it's gonna do a full rotation, 360 degrees. But at the moment, it's not linear, so select both of these keyframes, make sure they're active, and then you can hit the T key, and you're gonna make it linear. It's important, we don't want a Bezier curve on our animation um, graph over here. So let's just have a look at that. So now it's just one, if we hit spacebar, it's just one consistent linear rotation, which is going to make it more seamless. So with that done, let's add some other features. So I want to come to frame one, doesn't really matter. I'm going to go shift A, just add in a circle and tab into edit mode with that circle and just select all of the verts and hit E to extrude as to scale and just bring it in um, as much as keep scaling until it's small like that and tab out of edit mode. And what we need to do is with this guy selected, we don't want this guy to be rendered. So we don't want this object here rendered. So we're gonna go over to our object properties, go to visibility and turn off render. And then we're also gonna to go to our viewport display. And we wanna be able to see through this. So go to display as and make it, instead of textured, we wanna make that wire. So now it's not gonna show in the render and we can see through it. We're then gonna hit free to go into a right orthographic view. And then with this guy here, um, we're gonna hold it in and we're gonna hold select G and hold in um, control and we're gonna move it up and snap it to the middle of our um, cylinder here. Then we're gonna go into our front orthographic view and we're gonna go RX90 and we're gonna hit enter. And then we're gonna um, go control A and just apply the rotation. Then tab into edit mode, hit A to select all of this geometry and then go G, Y and move it toward the end here, just like that just so it's touching the edge and we're gonna go shift D to duplicate and then Y and we're gonna move it along the Y axis to this side here. So just so it's barely just touching the outside here. And this is just gonna be like an invisible kind of cage or force field that's gonna keep our um, rigid body simulation confined to this space in here. So let's tab out of edit mode and let's just go to frame one and you could parent this to this, um, you could take this guy and actually parent it to the this outside part and parent it to this wheel in the middle. But the problem is it ha gives issues with the rigid body. So we have to also animate this guy. Um, in fact, we might not even have to animate as long as this wheel, if you're, if you're not planning to move this wheel and only plan to move the ground underneath it, then we could actually just leave this one here as it is. So that's probably what we'll do in this case. So we only um, want the animation to be on this wheel in the inside. And this is just gonna kind of constrain our little um, spheres to the inside of this guy right here. So that's all good, but it doesn't look like it's moving anywhere. So what we need to do is add in like a kind of a conveyor belt underneath it. So let's go shift A, add in a cube. Oops, not a plane, add in a cube. And then go S, Z to scale it down on the Z axis. About that much, and then we're gonna go S, X, and we're gonna scale it down on the X. So we're just creating kind of like a belt part of our conveyor belt. So it's just something like this. I'm gonna go G, Z, and just move it down a little bit. So it's kind of just sitting right underneath this um, cylinder. And then we're gonna go Control A and just make sure to apply that scale. So just roughly something like this should be fine. Then we're gonna go to our modifiers, give it a bevel modifier. Bring the amount down here. We don't want a really big bevel, just like that. Bring the segment count up a few times. Go to object mode and enable shades move. Then to duplicate it, just come here and give it an array modifier. And then bump the segment count up to something like 60. It could be really long, it doesn't matter too much. It just gives you plenty to work with. So 60 of those, you can make it more if you want. So now we have this conveyor belt that we can move along with our animation. So a simple way to do this would be to, because we need this to be loopable. So let's hit seven to go to our top orthographic view. And if this selected this conveyor belt in our top orthographic view, we're gonna hit G. And while we're holding control or command, we're gonna just move this and snap it. So we're gonna, you should see it snapping in increments. So we're gonna snap it to the grid about here. So right there, we've snapped it, okay? And we need to mark where that edge is there. You can see, if you look at the, the spacing here, we've got one, two, three, four of the grid spacings here. So we just need to keep an eye on that. So let's go to frame one. And if this conveyor belt selected, we're gonna hit I and we're gonna insert a location keyframe. Then we're gonna come to frame 130 and we're gonna go G, X, and we're gonna move this along the X and we need to make sure that, for example, just, just so you understand. So you can see this edge here is perfectly snapped to this line here. So wherever we move it up to, the edge of, we gotta have one of these edges perfectly lined up there. So to make it a bit easier, let's just actually add in a cube 
and just move it along the Y or the X just so it's kind of lined up right next to there so we have a reference point just like that okay so we're going to select this conveyor belt and then on our last frame 130 we're going to go G X and we're going to move this and I'm holding in control to snap it incrementally and we're going to move it up to I don't know about there okay so that should be enough and you can see here if I hit G X I've moved it up so that where two of these meet here is perfectly in the edge of that cube then I'm going to hit I I'm going to insert a location keyframe. Then I'll select that reference cube, hit X, and I'm going to delete it. Select the conveyor again, and then select both of these keyframes. Hit T, and make that linear. So now, if we actually have a look at this, and we go to frame one, and we hit the space bar, we can see it kind of ha has this conveyor belt underneath it, which makes things a little bit more realistic and believable. So let's quickly add up a camera in here. So I'm going to come roughly about here in my viewport, I'm going to go Shift A, I'm going to go add in a camera. Hit zero to go into camera view. G, middle mouse button, just to pull back. So you guys sh should know how to use a camera if you don't. There are a lot of tutorials out there. So I'm just going to move my camera like this. And then I'm going to go to my output settings. I'm going to make the X resolution 18, 1080. So make it 1080 as well. Leave the Y at 1080, so that makes it a square aspect ratio. Then go to your camera settings and let's make this 95 in the uh, um, focal length. And I'm just going to zoom back once again, just like this. And with our, while we've still got our camera selected, just go over here to the viewport display and go down to this slider here. Just drag it up a little bit until you can't see the outside. That's just going to make things look a bit better. So let's go to frame one and hit the space bar and it should look relatively loopable. So you can see here, it should just look like it's going to loop forever. Okay? So we shouldn't see any kind of jumping or anything funny going on. So don't be too precise with it. Even a conveyor belt seems a little difficult, but it really isn't. So just keep, just kind of follow my steps and get it till it's all looking like this. That should work just fine. Now we can um, start adding in the next part, which are going to be the little spheres that are going to kind of simulate in here. Then we'll add some rigid bodies to everything. So let's start by adding in a sphere. So I'm going to go Shift A. I'm going to go to my mesh options, I'm going to add in a UV sphere. And we're going to come here to the add UV sphere down here. And let's change the top to 12. And let's change the rings here, the ring value to something like 8. We don't need this to be too high poly, it'll slow things down. So something like that should be fine. Then we're going to go S to scale it down. And we're going to go G, Z, move it up. Just place it in here roughly somewhere. Maybe scale it down a bit more. Go to object mode and enable shade smooth. So now we have a sphere here. So what we can do is we can go shift D to duplicate this guy and just move it over to the side. Scale it a little bit, then shift D to duplicate it and then scale this one a bit. Just make different sizes in there like that. In fact, before we go too far, I'm just gonna hold in shift and select these three spheres. Then I'm gonna hit the M key and I'm gonna go new collection and I'm gonna call these balls or whatever. Just call them what you want. Hit OK. Now you can see we have a new collection here. So now we can actually turn off everything else so it doesn't get in the way. So um, let's just keep duplicating. So if these spheres selected, I'm just going to go Shift D and keep duplicating them, making different sizes and just kind of placing them around inside of here. Making really small ones, scaling them down and just placing them somewhere. Shift D to duplicate. That's all I'm doing, just Shift D and I'm just repeating that. So just fill up the space in here as much as you want, like that. And then um, you can just select everything, go into your right orthographic view, and then just move it all over to the side, and then go Shift D, duplicate a whole bunch more, put them over like this. As long as your duplicate your duplications fill in the space and they don't um, extrude or stick out anywhere of this kind of cage that we set up in here. So um, just hide everything else and just select all of these spheres. Make sure they're all active. We need to apply the scale if we scale them. So go Control A and make sure to apply the scale. And um, by the way, so if we just turn this layer off and we get the other collection layer here, we're just going to select these items here. Make sure to select everything. Control A and just make sure to apply the scale. Whenever we're working with physics or rigid bodies, whatever we're working with, we do need to apply the scale. So now we can um, just bring these guys back. And if we want this to work, we need to add some rigid body. So let's select the actual um, cylinder here. And let's go over to our physics. Give it a rigid body. 
We want this to be passive. We need to, if you don't tick animate it, it won't work. So make sure to tick animate it because we've animated this object. We're going to set the shape to convex, um, from convex hole to mesh. It's going to be a bit better quality, though it's going to take a bit longer. And we're going to come here to the surface response or the sensitivity and just make it 0 0.001. And then we're going to also just select this guy out here. Give it a rigid body as well. Make it passive, so just this outer part. Make this convex um, from convex hole to mesh. And then set the margin here to 0 0.001. So just like that. And it, you don't have to tick animation because it's um, that's not going to be an issue. So now we hit, you know, if we play it, hit our space where nothing's going to happen because we need to add rigid body to the balls as well. So let's get rid of that. This is untick the first collection so we can select these spheres and select any one of them. Go to rigid body. This time you're going to leave it at active. Make sure to make it mesh over here as well. And come to the margin sensitivity, make it 0 0.001. And once you have all of that, and we know you know which one that is, so in this case, it's this one that has that. To add it to everything else, just with this guy selected, hit A to select everything else. So this one is still the main active one, and everything else is also selected. If you hit F3 and you type in here copy, you should see um, something called copy from active. So click on that. Now if you select any one of these spheres, they're going to have the exact same um, physics property. So you don't have to go and manually add it to all of them. So now if we go over to and add in our other collection here and we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, there you have it. Now we have this nice, awesome looking simulation and we're gonna cache it out in a second. So um, in fact, we could probably do that now. So I'm gonna show you. So let's go over to our, um, just click on this um, scene properties here. Go to the rigid body world. Obviously just make sure to save as well. So I'm just gonna save this before we do this. Um, and then over here on the rigid body, go down to the cache. We're only working with 130 frames here, so let's make the end value 130. So we don't do unnecessary um, bake here. And then we're just gonna click on bake. And this is gonna go through here and it's just gonna bake all of this into this blend file so it doesn't lag or slow us down. So um, once this is done, we'll come back and we'll continue. Okay, so here we have it. Now it's all cached out. And you can see if we play the animation, um, it's not lagging. It's nice and kind of in real time. You can add more balls if you want and uh, mess around with things. But what I'm also gonna do, I'm gonna select this outer cage. We don't need it anymore. So you can delete it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit M and I'm gonna click new collection. And I'm just gonna call it junk. So this is stuff that we're not gonna use, but we might want it at some point. So I'm just gonna hit okay. And now over here in our collections, if we just drop all these down. If we go, we can see one here called junk. I'm just gonna untick it and we're not gonna see that anymore. And um, as far as um, the hard part go, that's it. Now we have it here. Now we can start adding in some more features. So let's go shift A and I'm gonna add in a plane. I'm gonna scale it up about that much. And then I'm gonna go S, X and scale it along the X like that. Then I'm gonna tab into edit mode, go to the edge select, select the back edge here. So you can see the camera is pointing here, so that's the back edge there. We're going to go E to extrude, Z, and just constrain it to the Z axis up a little bit. And then we're going to go E to extrude, and we're going to hit Y and move it back a bit, and then E to extrude and Z and move it up. So we're just creating kind of like a nice fancy little backdrop with a little taper here. It can be anything really, just use your imagination pretty much. And then I'm going to tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go Control A and I'm going to apply the scale. And then we go to my modifiers and just give it a bevel. And then bump up the segment count here just to make it nice and rounded. Go to object mode and enable shade smooth. So now we have this nice backdrop here. If we go into our camera view, we can see we have this. So now we actually have like a, it's not just floating in empty space. Um, as far as these guys over here, um, we might have to bring the whole thing down here so it's not intersecting with the conveyor belt. So just something like that. Um, should be fine. Okay, so there we have it. Now we have a nice looping animation. It's we've got our scene. So the next part, um, actually, before we get to the next part, let's um, add another little feature here that I think really is going to make this look cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this cylinder here. I'm going to go S Y. I'm just going to scale it into Y just a bit, like that. I'm going to tab into edit mode, and I'm going to come over here with my edge select still there. 
I'm going to go control R in the middle here and you can see it's adding in an edge to it. So double click, double G and just slide it to the front here. And then what I'm going to do is with that edge still active, okay, you can see here that edge is active. I'm going to go control B, so control B to bevel it. I'm going to create a bevel like this, okay. And then I'm going to go E to extrude. And I'm going to go Alt S and I'm going to scale it in like that just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my materials tab. I'm going to click plus. I'm going to go new. And then I'm going to go control plus just once to grow the selection. So all of that is selected. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to assign that new material. I'm going to call this material metal. Okay. So it just makes it a little bit easier. And then I'm going to go control minus or command minus just to shrink the selection. So all we should have selected are these faces inside of the cylinder so we can scale it later on. So then we're going to tab out of edit mode. And um, let's quickly add with the cylinder still selected. Let's quickly go over to our object data properties. Click on the shape key button twice over here. So um, we have our bases and our key one. So with the key one here selected, just quickly go back into edit mode and then go S to scale that in like this and then tab out of edit mode. And now we have this value slider here we can control. How cool is that? So let's quickly do that. I'm gonna actually come over to frame one and on frame one, I'm gonna make this all the way up to one and I'm gonna hit I to insert a keyframe on frame one. Then I'm gonna come to about, I don't know, frame 24 or something, drag this down to zero and then just click on this little button here or hit I to insert a keyframe. And then come over to about frame 105, insert another keyframe and then go over to the very end frame and then drag that up to one again and then click somewhere on here to add a keyframe or hit I. So now if we go to frame one, go to our camera view and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see we have this. And the reason, there's two reasons we have this gate closing here, because if we didn't have it, every time it loops, we would see everything else looping seamlessly, but these spheres would just fall again and it wouldn't look loopable. So this is a little way to kind of cheat and get around it, but it also just adds a really satisfying element to this, which I feel just adds to the animation. So that's why we're doing it like this. And um, now we pretty much have everything done and we can get into our lighting and the materials and just kind of adding in some depth of field and rendering this out as a final animation. So let's do that now. So let's start by adding in some lights into our scene. So I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna go to my light options, add in an area light, hit G, Z, move it up to about here. Hit S to scale it up like this and then S, X and scale along the X. So just something like that should be fine. Come to the power here and let's make it 160. And once we've done that, we can go to our right orthographic view, hit sh shift D to duplicate it, move it towards the camera, and then rotate it in towards the subject here. And then we're gonna go shift D, Z, move it up a bit, and then take this new duplication and just scale it a little bit, and then just move it like just around there. So just have that little light there. So now if we go to our camera view, and we go over to our render settings and because we're using Eevee, we're just gonna enable ambient occlusion, screen space reflections. And if you're working with refractive materials like glass, just make sure to enable refraction, which I'm not gonna do because we're not making glass. Then if you hit Z and you go rendered, you should see this. Now we're ready to start adding our shader. So let's go and get started with that. So let's go over to our shading workspace, obviously. Go into your camera view, hit Z, make sure you're in your rendered workspace, your rendered mode. And let's select these, um, con this conveyor belt here. And let's go over to our materials tab. Let's click new and let's just call it um, belt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and you can make whatever color palette you want, but I'm gonna kind of go with like a bit of a yellow like this, orangey yellow. And I'm gonna bring the roughness down a little bit. Then I'm gonna click the plus again. I'm gonna come to the drop down. I'm gonna make that a metal material. That same metal material we created earlier. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. And we're gonna to go to the first one here because that's being duplicated. And just make sure you have face select enabled. Select the end face, click on the metal material and assign. Then tab out of edit mode. Go back to the camera view. And now we can start working on that metal material. So you can see here we have it selected. Let's come here and drag that metallic slider all the way up to one and bring that roughness down a bit. 
So now we can see that's looking nice and metallic. And let's start working on the actual um, environment or backdrop here. So let's just select this big piece here. Let's go new and let's to add some visual interest interest. Let's add a texture. So I'm going to go shift a down here. I'm going to search type in noise and get a noise texture and then plug the color into the base color here. And then you can go shift a search and just simply get a texture coordinate. So type in texture and get a texture coordinate. And we're going to take the object and plug it into the vector of the noise here. And then what we need to do is we need to go shift a search and type in color and click on color ramp, place it over here in between the noise and the principal. And now we're going to drag this black value all the way up to about here and then dra drag this white value down a bit. And then obviously you can just increase the scale here if you want to make it a little bit smaller. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust these sliders by dragging them till I get something that I like. So now we have a nice black and white um, values here we can use as a mix. So I'm going to grab the principled and the material output, just move them over a bit, and then I'm going to go Shift A, search, and we'll get one more node. So we're going to type in mix, and we're going to get the mix RGB. Now we can take the color output of that, plug it into the base color of the principal, and then take this output from the color ramp and plug it into the factor. And now whatever colors we use here will be mixed. So if we're going to camo view here, we're still in rendered. Let's grab the top value and let's make it something like a dark green. That's what I want to go for. And the bottom color will be the rest. So I'm going to make it kind of like a bit of a lighter green. And once I've done that, added in those speckles, I'm just going to come here to the roughness and just bring it down to make the whole surface more reflective. And that's it. Now we can grab all of this no these nodes here. So I'm just going to select all of these nodes. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go copy. And now if we select the actual cylinder we did earlier itself, and you can remember when we first got started, we added the two first placeholder materials. So let's go to material one. Let's select these two nodes, hit X to delete them, then right click and let's paste. So now we've got that same material there. All we have to do is come here to the mix and change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the top slider here. I'm going to drag this value up. I'm going to make it kind of more like a lighter green. And then I'm going to come here to the bottom and I'm going to make that a darker green. So I'm just kind of flipping it around almost. And I'm going to come to the scale here. I'm going to make it smaller, something like eight. And I'm just going to drag these values down a little bit here just till I get something that kind of looks cool to me. So something like that. And then I'm going to go to the second material here. I'm going to delete these two notes, right click, paste in that note setup. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over yellow theme. So I'm going to click on the top color input here and I'm going to make it something like this, kind of like almost like the yellow, the orange yellow underneath it, but not quite as orange. And then the bottom value here, I'm going to kind of make like a grayish dark kind of yellow like that. And I'm just going to mess around as well here with the scale, maybe make it eight as well. And just drag the slider values down a little bit. Um, it's completely up to you what you want to go for. Um, just mess around with things till you get something that you like. So I'm kind of just making up this palette um, as a green palette. So I haven't fought this out too much. So I just kind of like the way this looks and I'm going for it. But you guys can spend as much time with colors and shaders as you want. And then obviously if you want to get everything out of the way, just untick the top collection. So we're just left with our spheres here. In fact, just select the lights and the backdrop, hit M and just move them to that first collection as well. So they're out of the way. And now we're just going to select our spheres over here. So select any one of these spheres, click new and just call it spheres or balls, whatever you want. And um, then hit A to select everything. And with that main one still active, we're going to hit control L and just link the material. So now all of them have that same spheres material. So with any one of them selected, just come down here. And if we go shift A and we search, we can get um, this, just, just type in um, object. So just type in object and get an object data node. And we're going to take the random input and plug it into the base color here. And then if we go shift A search, we can get another color ramp. Just place this one over here and just move these two nodes up here at the front. And then we're going to go shift A search and just get a mix get a mix RGB and then we're going to use this as the color ramp as an input in the factor. And now if we hit Z and we go into rendered view, 
bring back our collection this here as well so we have everything else back in the scene. With any one of these spheres selected here, you can kind of try this out. So now if we change these colors here, so I'm gonna make one like a bit of a green and the other one I'll make a different kind of green. Like that, so you can see now we have kind of like this variation of colors. It's kind of creating these random shades for us automatically. So you can see you can change the color here like this and that kind of just gives us a shader that has different kind of colors in it at the same time. I'm just gonna come here to the roughness and just bring that down as well to make them a bit more glossy. So you can see here for me, the color theme scheme here is obviously um, gonna be, as you can see, green and yellow. And then we have obviously this metal shader here. So now, if we hit the spacebar to play the animation and we pause at any frame, you can see that's what it looks like. So that looks pretty cool. But to make this look even cooler, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my camera and I'm gonna go over to my camera settings and I'm gonna go enable depth of field. I'm gonna to come to the drop down here. I'm gonna to go to the f-stop. I'm gonna make it 0.5. Hit enter. So now if we go into camera view, we can see it's kind of like a nice depth of field and we need to also click on the eyedropper and select the cylinder itself as the focal point. So now we can see we have that depth of field. I might actually even make it 0.6 like that. And if you un untick the depth of field, you can kind of see the difference here that that makes. It's gonna take a bit longer to render, but I just think it adds that extra little detail. And um, yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Another thing we can do is we can select our camera, we can go to our constraints, and we can add a track to constraint, click on the eyedropper and select that cylinder. And now it doesn't matter where we move the camera. So I've got the camera active. I'm gonna hit G to move it. And it'll always be following or tracking that object there. So I'm gonna go back to my layout and I'm gonna go to frame one. In frame one, I'm gonna move my camera over to the side a little bit. I'm gonna hit I. I'm gonna insert a location keyframe. Then I'm gonna go to frame 130. I'm gonna hit I and insert a location keyframe. So now we have a hold, but anywhere in between, we can kind of move the camera a little bit. And we're gonna hit I and insert a location keyframe. So now, if I quickly just go into material preview instead, or just solid, you can see we have this kind of like camera movement like this, which looks cool. And um, this is a nice little satisfying animation. And um, I'm gonna show you how do we can render it out. So spend as much time as you want. I'll quickly show you my original here um, that I've spent a little bit more um, time on, put a little bit more effort into. But you can see here, this is my original. And it looks pretty cool. And I just kind of did the exact same thing I just showed you guys. But what I can see here of my original, I also selected the wall at the back here on this guy and in my materials, just click plus. You can add one of the other materials like the belt, for example, and assign it. So now we have that kind of yellow at the back to break up the green a little bit for us. So now I'm gonna show you how we can render this out as a final animation. So let's go to our output here. And we're gonna to go to our output folder here, click on it. Select anywhere in your desktop. I'll just select my, oh, anywhere in your computer. I'm gonna select my desktop. So that's the destination. Enter the file format, make it FFmpeg video. Go to the encoding and I prefer to make the container an MP4. And then once you've done it, just hit Control or Control S or Command S just to save. It's always super important to save your work. And then you can go render and then render animation. And once you do that, it should render out a final animation. So I've already done that with my original and I'll quickly show you what that looks like if I can get it playing here. So that's my original here. And um, I'm gonna be putting this on Patreon. So this blend file is going on Patreon and you guys who are on Patreon, you can check that out. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. If you do, check out some of my other things. If this isn't for you, I do cover character anime, um, character courses, how to make characters, rig them, and I've got all sorts of stuff on there you might wanna check out. So I'll see you guys next time and uh, stay safe.